Hi, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your June 16th to the 30th, 2021 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps this channel grow, and yeah, it just makes me unbelievably happy to have you here and to have this platform. So thank you so much for doing so. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. All right. So at the root right here is our rooted self at the bottom. The left hand side is our inner self, the middle, our heart, our emotional self, the right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the tarot has to say. We have the wheel of fortune, the seven of cups and the devil. The devil is Capricorn energy time frame is December 22nd to January 19th, our inner self. We have the Ace of Cups and the Eight of Swords. Interesting. Our emotional self, we have the Six of Wands and the Five of Pentacles. There's a pattern here. Okay. And then in our outer arena, we have the Nine of Swords, the Queen of Wands, and the Lover's card. So the Lover's also represents Gemini energy. Time frame, May 21st to June 20th. If you're born on the cusp with Gemini or if you have Gemini in your chart, this is going to come out quite powerfully. Just as if you have Capricorn in your, car in your chart, this is going to come out very powerfully too. So what's interesting here is that you have Blessings card and then a Hardship card. So in each area, you have a Blessing and a Hardship. And that can make this time astoundingly confusing, astoundingly overwhelming, astoundingly intense. So let's look at your chakra energy. What is the chakra energy for Capricorn? June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Capricorn. June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Capricorn. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. 
We have inspiration, which is the sacral chakra. Now that's really quite beautiful. But again, this is a blessing and a hardship because the sacral chakra is where our creative energy is stored, is where our sexual energy is stored, but it's also where our negative energy from this life and past lives are held on to. So the sacral chakra, even though we have inspiration, we have this new dawn, we have this new day, we have this new power coming and leading us forward, there's also this sense of, I have a blessing, but I also have to get through the muck and the mire, which is what this time is all about. It's looking at what inspires us. It's looking at how we create. How are we feeling stunted? How are we being held back? You know, what is it that we desire that it feels like we're taking five steps forward? you know, or one step forward and five steps back, or even five steps forward, 10 steps back. It, it's going to feel as if we're trudging uphill and it's all sand and it's scorching hot and our feet are burning, but there is this sense of, I can get there, I can do this. Even though it might feel overwhelming at times, even though it does feel a bit intense or a lot a bit intense. So let's look at our energy we need to be mindful of. What is the energy that Cancer needs to be mindful of June 16th to the 30th, 2021? Cancer, what is the energy that Cancer needs to be mindful of June 16th to the 30th, 2021? Cancer, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. The Princess of Wands. It's letting our passion get the best of us. It's going to be something that we need to be mindful of because this is a time, again, we can see progress and then also struggle and we're going to tend to overshoot. We're going to tend to think, if I just put more on my plate, if I just push harder, if I just go harder and longer and stronger, I'll be able to get there. And this is going to be a time where that isn't necessarily the case. We need to step back. We need to connect with our souls and ourselves and what we desire and where it is that we want to be. What are we doing for ourselves and what are we doing for others to let them know that I'm not going to be held back or I'm not going to be denied. There is also a sense here with the, yeah, with the princess of, of wands, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, that we are going to be very attracted to and very drawn to people who are very passionate, but don't have the stable ground for which to build that passion off of. This is a princess. So they're, they're not a queen. They're not a king. They are, they are going to be a person who is starting. And they're not going to see things the same way. They're not going to have the long-term goals that we need to, to have in our corner in order to succeed, in order to achieve the way that we want to. So just being mindful of that and that they're going to use us and emotionally drain us to be able to kind of energize themselves a bit more. Now, at our root is the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune, well, it starts with the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is tremendous change coming forward. We're entering into a new season. And we can see what's happening with this change is that here we're going from blessing to hardship, right? Blessing to hardship. And in the public arena, we're going from hardship to blessing. So what we're doing here is we're having this transition. And in our inner selves, there's a sense of, can I do this? We're going to have this desire to hold ourselves back based off of past failures, doubts, fears, negativity spoken over us, like a curse when we were little, there's going to be the, these hurts and these pains from past relationships that come forward. And we're going to be looking at this rather intently during this time and intensely during this time. The new season that we're entering into might not be the season that we want, but it's going to be a season that is astoundingly important for us. When we enter it emotionally, all right, there is this sense of oh my gosh, I'm not doing this right. Oh my gosh, I'm not moving forward. Oh my gosh, you know, I'm too much in my own head. I'm going from this healing to being too much in my own head. I'm going from a celebration, a celebration of myself emotionally to a poverty mentality, thinking, you know, things aren't going to move forward the way that I want them. The blessing isn't going to come in. That's not going to be the truth. What happens is that we have to look at this transition time. It's kind of like when winter turns to summer or summer turns to winter. The first couple of weeks or the first couple of months, you can feel really cold or really hot and it's, it's uncomfortable, but then your body adjusts. And this is going to be what this time is for us, where it's like, okay, my body is adjusting to, to the change. It's kind of like the spring and, and, and fall period, the time of adjustment so that I can be able to bear the, to bear the intensity that is coming. And it leads us to our dreams. So there's a shift pers personally, powerfully, intensely that is moving us towards looking at our dreams, understanding our dreams, knowing that the seas have parted so that we could see ourselves, what we want, what we desire, what we need, what we long for 
much more openly and much more clearly. It brings us back to our sacral chakra, our creative energy that's moving forward, the inspiration that is guiding us. We're going to see the seas of our personal doubt, our hurt, our pain, our disappointment starting to part. And as we see this, we start to see what is it that I desire? Where is it that I want to be? What have I held onto as a sacred dream for myself that I haven't let myself walk into? I haven't let myself go after. And as we see this, and as we say this, and as we start to open up the doors to ourselves and for ourselves, we start to see the place that we retreat to in our own mind that is a healing place, is a powerful place. But instead of it being locked away, we start to bring it to the forefront of our reality. We start to look at what we really want and what we really long for and what are we doing to sabotage ourselves because self-sabotage is absolutely a thing. So we look at our sabotage, we look at our doubt, we look at our fear, we look at our chaos and we call it out. And we look at our dreams and we call them forward. And it brings us to the devil. It brings us to that energy of I can't. Now, whether you believe in the devil or not, that's neither here or there. The pictorial representation of the devil is, is not a good one. There is a sense of feeling chained, feeling bound, feeling as if I can't move forward the way that I want to, as if somebody else pulls the strings. And this could be also those moments in life where we're on the brick, brink of something big and then sorrow starts coming over, doubt, fear, negativity. We start to feel as if, you know, I failed in the, in the, in the past. So what makes me think I can move forward in blessing now? I, I haven't been able to call forward what I want, what I long for, what I need, what makes me think that I can do it now. And there's a beauty that starts to come with the devil. And that might sound odd, but it comes when we start to realize what is holding us back, our addictions. Now, whether they be the addictions that we're used to of alcohol, drugs, sex, food, shopping, whatever, or the addictions of self-doubt, of giving up, of self-sabotage, of, you know, of putting everybody else's needs before our own. So we're just so dog tired that we, we can't. And we start to call that out and say, why am I doing this to me? Why am I holding myself back? What is it that I'm afraid of succeeding at? What is it that I'm afraid of achieving? And as we start to see this, now this could be in the public arena, this could be in our inner selves, this could be towards a dream that we have for our lives, but we always tend to get just so far and then we lose interest. And now we're going to see that we're calling ourselves out and we're calling that energy out to be able to move forward towards what we want and what we desire and where it is that we want to be. And we start to break free. This is just negativity. The devil is simply negativity, is the chaotic representation of life. And life is, is chaos. You know, human beings are chaos. And it's a chaotic form coming forward and saying, you just have to stay here. You don't get to have what you want. You get to stay in the chaos. And what we're going to see is inwardly, we're healing from this. We're looking at ourselves emotionally. We're looking at ourselves honestly. And we're going to see that divinity, God, source, spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, cancer, is handing us a gift just for us. It is the Ace of Cups. We are represented by the cups in the minor arcana. We're represented by the chariot in the major arcana. We are being handed this gift. And it is starting to change the way that we see things. It's starting to change who we are. It's starting to change how we hold ourselves. And it becomes very beautiful because when it's changing who we are, it's getting rid of the toxicity that is washed over us. It's getting rid of the doubt and the fear that we learn as we grow. And so here with the Ace of Cups, it can make us much more sensitive inwardly in our inner selves. People might not be aware of this, but in our inner selves, we're going to be taking things really to heart. It's going to be a sensitive time. It's going to be an intense time. It's going to be a time where we can overthink and we'll really have a tendency to overanalyze. And that's when we get stuck in our own minds. It's restriction. It's doubt. It's hardship. It's pain. It's disappointment. Whereas here, this is emotions because it's bringing all the emotions up. And with the, with the Eight of Swords, we think, I'm just stuck here. I'm stuck in this cage. I'm stuck in, the, I'm stuck in this trap. I'll never be able to get to where I want to be. The responsibilities pile up. I need time to decompress, to be able to create what I want. But if I take that time to decompress, I push myself back further and further and further, and I'm running on fumes. I'm running on empty. I don't have time to connect with my creativity, with my soul, with myself, with what I desire. And this is a time where we look at things and we look at what we're told. 
and we're look at, we look at our lives and we start to see things in a different way. The Eight of Swords in the Rider Waite Smith deck is a person placed in the midst of these eight swords. And you can just imagine, they're blindfolded, they're bound. You can just imagine them being told, you know, you move any way, you're going to be cut. There's water at their feet. You're at the edge of the ocean. They're not. They have this little trickle of a stream coming down. Why? Because emotionally, when you're in your own head, you, emotions become panic. And emotions can become a liability. So the emotions that run through are terrifying, but they're small. So this is a time where we start to look at this and say, you know what, enough is enough. And we take off the blindfold. We, we break our bonds because the ropes are loose. We break our bonds. We take off the blindfold and we see that we're not caged. Whichever way we, were, we move, we're not going to drown or be cut. We're going to be able to, to free ourselves, to move forward, to take a sword as a weapon and another one for good measure and, and move forward. And it brings us to a place of victory. Emotionally, it's a place of victory that we're entering because in our inner selves, we've, we've worked so hard, we've come so far. And this place of victory is saying, you know, it's time to celebrate. It's time to celebrate who we are. It's time to celebrate what we've accomplished. It's time to celebrate where we're headed, what we desire. And again, this is where the passion comes in. We're going to be very drawn to people who put on a facade, who put on a front. And with the wands, the wands are very good at having the light shine, okay? And kind of drawing us in like a moth to a flame. Can they deliver at what they are presenting? That's going to be something that's going to be very interesting during this time because a lot of the people that we're going to meet, they're rather new souls or they're rather new at what they're doing and they're not going to be able to deliver at what they say. So our celebration of ourselves makes us look emotionally and they're going to feed off of the emotions, makes us look like a very good tar target for them. They're going to think, oh, this person has it all together. This person knows what they want, knows what they desire, knows where they want to be. And what we're going to see here is this change that starts to come in. We start to celebrate ourselves, but then we start to doubt ourselves because of corruptive energy, because of, you know, if I celebrate myself, I should be able to move farther ahead. I should be having more success. Things should be going better. But then it leads us to the five of pentacles. And the five of pentacles is worry, doubt, and fear, the poverty mentality. It's almost as if I feel like an imposter. I feel like a fraud. I don't get to celebrate me because I just don't because I'm not constantly producing, because I'm not constantly as successful as I think I should be, because, because, because. And now the Five of Pentacles comes in and says, well, don't you remember? Don't you remember the really hard childhood you've had? Don't you remember the failed relationships? Don't you remember the, the, the heartbreaks, the pains, the disappointments, the crummy jobs, you know, the being overworked, underappreciated, whatever it is for the indiv individual, whatever made us feel like we were on the outside of wealth, that's what starts coming forward. And we really start to doubt. And we think, well, how can I celebrate me? Or I'm going to celebrate me, but I'm fighting against the current of thinking that it's not okay. So emotionally, we have to step back. We have to step back and connect. Connect with our creative energy. Connect with what we desire, what we want, what we need, what we long for, where it is that we want to be, what it is that we're seeing, what it is that we're building. And it starts to become intense. But this time is intense. It's not a light, happy, you know, fluffy bunny time, though we would like it to be. And if it does become that for people, that, that's just beautiful. But what it is, is that we start to call ourselves out on our own poverty, on our own hurt and pain and disappointment. And we start to say, how long? How long do I punish myself? How long do I walk in doubt? How long does... How long does money get to be my guide emotionally? Because when we're talking about emotions, we're talking about our passion, we're talking about our, our emotional self, our truth of the heart. And this, this comes from curses spoken over us when we were little, hurts and pains and disappointments, doubts and fears. And when I say curses, it doesn't mean like male Maleficent coming in and cursing the child. What it means is that you know, people said negative things. Now, whether they said them to be mean and hateful and spiteful, 
or whether they said them because they were tired and overwhelmed and they didn't want to hear the, the kids sing their song the 18th million time or even just once. That's, that's irrelevant. Pain is pain. And as we are experiencing it, to say it has kept me from where I want to be, it, that voice comes in and it haunts me. That's when we have to look at it. And it's not seeking an apology from anybody. It's not having them confess or anything like that. It's saying, you don't get to keep me out. I'm opening up the gates. I'm opening up the door. I'm going into the place of, of beauty and, and worship and power, however that appears in our lives. It is also, you know, breaking the sense of it has to fit this cookie cutter mold. What if it gets to be something extraordinary? What if it gets to be something astoundingly personal? What if I get to celebrate myself even knowing that I have fallen and I have failed and that times were hard and that, you know, bad decisions were made or I had to, to scrape up from the bottom? If we do that and we see that and we embrace that emotionally and honestly, well, things really do start to change. And then it brings us to the public arena. And the public arena is echoing our inner self. We have the Eight of Swords, which is keeping us held back. And then we have the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is this doubt, fear, and, and nightmare where it says, this is what I'm most afraid of. You know, this is what carries with it, you know, the hurt and the pain and the devastation. How will I ever move away from it? How will I ever not use this as my guide, as the moon that illuminates the darkness? How will I ever be able to move forward? And this is saying, first of all, to stop. To stop the, the nightmare cycle, the worry, the doubt, the, the, the hardship that keeps us up at night. And be able to go to sleep. Now we might need to take calms or, you know, I forget the other one that starts with a G. That, that, helps, that helps us sleep. You know, melatonin, yes, but there's another one. Oh, I can't remember. And this is going to be a time where we need to look at our fears and say, I see you. I name you. Fear of failure. Fear of, uh, fear of love. I mean, we have the lovers here. And there can be a fear of letting our hearts embrace something too much. A dream too much. A person, a, a desire for the future. And we start to see this. And we start to let this grow. And with the Nine of Swords, what we're looking at is we're looking at our worries, our doubts, and our fears, and how they are playing themselves out in the public arena, how they're taking the strings of us and saying, you don't get to. You don't get to have the love and the life and the, and the happiness and the joy that you want. You get to be held back. You get to be silenced. You get to be denied. And this is something that we're saying no to, and it moves us to the Queen of Wands. Now, if you're born on the cusp with Leo, this comes out more intensely, or if you have fire sign within your chart, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, this is the queen that is fiery and intense and rolls up her sleeves and says, that's it. I'm getting my hands dirty. I'm going in. I'm getting what I want. But she always makes me think of the goddess Hestia from Greek mythology. The goddess who said, I do not need to be one of the main, main goddesses. I get to be, I'll be a lesser goddess and I will be just as important because I stepped down and I stepped into myself. After the Olympians were done fighting, fighting the Titans, they were going to fight amongst themselves because there needed to be an equal amount of men and women, gods and goddesses. And there wasn't. And Hestia, in her wisdom, she stopped another world war by saying, no, I'm the goddess of fire. I do not need to be the main one, you know, the big one. I will step down. And then in every Greek home and every Roman home, she was worshipped. She was the center of the household. She was the hearth of the home, quite literally. And she was powerful. And that's what the Queen of Wands, in her greatest sense, is. Is this magical power to be able to warm and brighten and enlighten and to move us forward towards something more than we imagined something powerful within us 
this sense of connection and community and and purpose that doesn't need to be shouted from the top of mountains but needs to be lived with purpose and integrity and it brings us then to the lovers a sense of falling in love with life again the sense of knowing that there are always going to be at least two ways of looking at a situation of looking at a problem it's looking at what we want, at what we need, at where we desire being. It's moving forward towards a blessing. And it's letting love in. It's calling ourselves out for our own idiosyncrasies. And it's letting us move forward towards a blessing, towards a hope, towards a dream. The lovers is the opposite of the devil. It's not depicted as well in this deck. But the lovers in the Rider Waite Smith deck is a woman and a man standing with an angel over them with a tree, a fire, and a, no, a tree with a serpent and fruit, of course, and a tree of fire. And here we have them kneeling in supplication beyond a beast that holds a, a cow and skulls. We're not bound. If we can get out of our own way, if we can call ourselves out and be brutally honest, we will start to see our world open and we will start to see us manifesting what we love, what we desire, what we want, what we need within our public arena. Despite the chaos within us. Actually, it's not despite it, it's because of it. It's because it's called us out and called us forward. It's because we're seeing things in such a different way, in such a powerful light. Now it moves us, it moves us to our subconscious chakra message, which is listening, the throat chakra. The throat chakra is important because so often we spend our time speaking and speaking and speaking. And we think the throat chakra is all about our communication. Now it is time to step back and to listen, to take it in, to hear, to understand. And it brings us then to our subconscious energy to be mindful of which is the King of Pentacles. We need to be mindful of not breaking it all down into cost and effect. We need to step back and look at things in a humane way, in a powerful way, in an insightful way that moves us forward, that starts things anew for us, that leads us within inspiration. We also have to be very mindful of the way we take criticism or the way we take yeah, criticism or advice or however it's presented from somebody who is in an authority of power. Watching our finances is going to be important during this time, but not being obsessed with them. It leads us to our subconscious, not this one, our subconscious rooted message, which is the Princess of Wands. That which we have to be mindful of is also subconsciously going to be that which blesses us. The Princess of Wands, fire and passion and insight and ideas and questioning and discovering and, and seeing things in a different way is going to be astoundingly beneficial to us. Our subconscious inner self is the devil. Boundaries. We're going to have a really hard time with boundaries emotionally, stabilizingly, like rooting us, we're going to think, oh, I can just move this all or I can just, you know, do this. It'll be okay. It, it's not going to be okay. We have to look at what we want, set those clear boundaries, not fall into, into the realm of chaos, which is going to be very easy for us during this time, and move forward towards what we want and what we desire without letting others tempt us away from that path. Our subconscious emotional message is the four of pentacles, vampiric energy, feeling like I have to guard myself, feeling like if I open myself up, all that I have acquired that I treasure will be taken away from me. This is energy that drains. This is being drained. This is being overwhelmed. And this is, is feeling chaotic because of it. It moves us to our subconscious public arena message, which is the chariot. In the public arena, if we can be fully ourselves, embrace our passion and our power and everything in between. 
we become seemingly unstoppable. And seemingly is because we have all of this that we're dealing with that people aren't going to see, they aren't going to understand. So if you're looking for compassion, for people just to intuitively know, cancer, you're not going to have that during this time. You're going to need to tell them. You're going to need to say, listen, you know, to a friend or to somebody or just in like the workplace or at home, I need you to step back <laughs> just a little bit. Like I need just a little bit of time. I need to gather myself. I need to take a minute, you know, either go and get a tea or a coffee or, you know, go outside for lunch and be able to breathe the fresh air, be outside, you know, at home. This is what we're going to need to do in order to keep on moving ourselves forward, in order to be inspired the way that we want our inspiration to come. And the fact that the chariot is, is a powerhouse. You know, we don't often think of it, but chariots were driven by kings and queens. And so here, to drive our chariot, to move forward, we have to command this level of authority, of this level of power, and absolutely embrace it within ourselves. All right, Cancer, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's, excuse me, let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy, as, well, as the tides turn, and as the seasons change, and we see where it is, spirit is taking us divinity is taking us. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Cancer. <laughs>